Happy New Year, oldlangsign.net. It's me again. Um, hope everybody had a fun night last night. For all y'all who are hungover, once you get into your 40s and you realize boozing isn't what life is all about anymore, I mean, it's still fun, but uh, then you don't drink on New Year's Eve and you feel great the next morning. <laughs> I didn't even see actually see midnight. I, um, I think I was still recovering from Christmas when the cat apparently woke James up at like 5.30 in the morning, so then he was up, and then everybody was up and then just never caught back up on the sleep so last night we went to mandarin for like this big buffet dinner and then we got home we were watching some episodes of the office and such and it was like all of a sudden i was just like bang <laughs> i didn't even see the new year come in which you know it's not that big a deal people make a huge deal at new year's but it's really from one minute to the next what's the difference right um, it's more symbolic than anything but when you get to this age you've seen a lot of stuff and you realize it's all bullshit but that being said, what wasn't bullshit was the Leafs game last night. Uh, a New Year's Eve game, it was a bit earlier probably because of not wanting to um, go too late towards the deadline there of the, the midnight. Uh, they played at Minnesota at 6 o'clock. And I don't know if it's just, I think Minnesota has a newer building, but it doesn't show up well on TV, I noticed last night. It was almost like a watching a game out of the 80s or something. Like It just looked old and decrepit. Um, I'm just not sure if it just doesn't show up well on the camera or whatever, but it really looked like it didn't look as nice as a lot of the other arenas that you see. Um, now that could not be the case. It could just be the way it, it you know, shows up on camera, like I said, but, uh, yeah, I was expecting a little, something a little nicer, I guess, out of Minnesota's rink, considering they are the state of hockey after all. Um, but anyways, Minnesota's had a bit of, have a, had a bit of a rough go this year. They've been so consistent for so many years. Uh, but this year the wheels seem to have fallen off, uh, especially early in the, in the year. Although they have clawed their way back now to a couple of games above 500, so they've, I think they've turned the ship around uh, to some degree. But last night's game almost seemed like the Leafs were going to win it no matter what. Um, it was very close, but like all, all the stat categories were super close uh, within each other by a couple each way, you know, whatever way. And um, I think possession time was really close. Like everything just seemed to be dead close, but you could just tell the Leafs were gonna win. Um, Minnesota's chances, although they generated the you know a similar amount of shots, their chances you know they didn't they don't have as high end a talent as the Leafs have, and uh, and their their chances weren't as dangerous as the Leafs were. They didn't come from as 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 dangerous of spots as the Leafs did, and uh, and the Leafs had a really good team effort defensively as well which helped uh and freddie although he had to make 26 27 saves whatever it was um he didn't appear to be as taxed as as he he is a lot of other nights when the leafs are cop coughing up um you know dangerous turnovers right in front of them and stuff like that so um so yeah fred was solid um and then uh the leafs converted once on the power play uh went two for three on the pk uh, the goals they scored six minute in, six minutes in. It would, they were down low in the, the Minnesota end, and uh, Tavares was battling for the puck. Almost turned it over, got it back, and then literally slipped like a three foot pass over to Kerfoot, who was just waiting there, ready to go, and he roofed it uh, high glove on uh, on Dubnik. And then uh, towards the end of the first period, uh, it was uh, more down low play. Down low play. Uh, Barry was in pinching. He was in behind the Minnesota net. Uh, battling for the puck and then just kind of tried to throw it out front and it was just a scramble bouncing around Matthews was whacking away at it and trying to get it go uh, to get it to go around the the left Dubnik's left side and uh, eventually it just kind of popped loose into some skates and Nylander was just kind of waiting there for something to happen and he he just banged it in once it came loose um, and then uh, yeah it was in the second period I believe it was uh, Leafs were on a power play Again, the puck was down low. Nylander was in the, the left corner, slipped a, a pretty slick cross-crease pass uh, that had Dubnik going right to left, and uh, Matthews was the res recipient. Just bing-bang, one-timer, uh, up high, three-nothing Leafs. Um, I don't remember when Minnesota got their lone goal, but they did get one, and uh, the third period, it was 3-1. Tavares iced it with an empty netter, and uh, there's your 4-1 victory in Minnesota. 
Uh, yeah, so overall, a really solid game. Um, it's nice to see them have such a better game defensively, a more cohesive effort. And, uh, and then what that does, like I said, is that you just didn't see Freddy having to make those sparkling saves that he has to so often. Uh, and then you see, like, when they played the Rangers the other night, like, what did he let in? Three or four goals, I think, four goals. Um, but within those four goals they scored, he also had to make, you know, how many 10 bell type saves, right? So um, when the Leafs just play that little bit better defensively in front of him, he doesn't have to work that hard and he lets in one goal, you know, like, um, and, and it's just uh, such a better situation for him, both in terms of probably uh, his mental state of being <laughs> and also just keeping him uh, a little bit fresher physically too uh, for the rest of the season because it's a long season and we know with the whole backup goalie situation drama that everybody's kind of fabricated out of nowhere this year that he's probably going to get ridden a little more than he would have in previous years so um, it's important that they they try and help him out as much as possible uh, the only other note was that just before the game it was announced that they signed uh, defenseman Justin Hall to a three-year contract so there's one more I think the only they mentioned that the only defenseman the Leafs have signed through 2020 is Morgan Riley I mean he's their top guy but all the other guys are I think free agents as of the end of this year so now it's finally nice to have Hall signed because like I've mentioned in a few of my previous videos he's become such a revelation this year after Babs gave him the the pine for so long and he basically lost a year or so of his career to being a healthy scratch he's he's gotten into the lineup this year and and he's been dynamite so um to get him they got him for three years six million so two million dollars a year so a pretty good value for a guy that looks like he's only trending upwards um that's a pretty good signing and uh now they've got two defensemen signed long term <laughs> or longish term whatever um so that was encouraging news and uh he's actually from minnesota so he signed the deal kind of in minnesota uh, as kind of a homecoming so that was kind of cool so it's nice i don't know if dubis planned that but that's something that you know this new r regime of the leafs here like are warm towards their players and reward them and do things to make them feel valued and happy right whereas babs would have been like well we all saw what he did with spets of the first game of the year you know healthy scratch after trash talking him throughout the preseason and when when ottawa's when they're playing ottawa his former team that he played with for so for so long and babs goes and scratches him first game of the regular season like doesn't even give him a chance the one game you should give him a chance is the game against ottawa right like it just made no sense so it's it's really interesting to see this whole spin in in uh the approach of this organization toward towards its players and its fans and stuff it's really a breath of fresh air it's it's uh <clears throat> it's like they get it they get that you need to keep everybody happy you know like the fans pay a lot of money to watch these games buy the merch like the Leafs I'm, I'm assuming are the most expensive team in the league to watch um and and buy stuff for um which is too bad and 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 so you know they get it and they get also that as a player it's hard to play in Toronto there's a lot more that comes with it than probably 90% of the other teams in the league would ever even come close to facing. I mean, Toronto's a pressure cooker. Montreal's a pressure cooker. The other original six cities are all pressure cookers. But I think Toronto is is easily the worst. So the management gets that. You know what? These guys go through a lot They're daily. It's not just, oh, come to the rink in your flip-flops on the California coast and go play a game of hockey. Go home afterwards. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody knows who you are unless you're wearing your uniform, right? Like, it, you've got this anon, anon, anonymity that... Um, you know serves you well and, and taking that pressure of the press and the drama and all that shit off your shoulders right so so i think that the organization gets it and they're trying to just understand everybody's needs around the leafs fans players uh, staff everything and uh they've really t uh, turned everything around and and i think this is the right approach if they're not, if dubis like i said if if he isn't going the toughness route to some degree and I don't feel that that's the right route in terms of the, the style of game he's playing. That's his own thing. Like, that's that's the way he thinks he's going to win with this team. And that's fine. Um, that's one thing I kind of don't agree with. But, uh, again, hopefully they prove me wrong. But at least they're, they're, they're understanding their direction. It's a good direction all around. 
and and they're executing it finally they're not they're not letting anything stand in their way and, and, and stuff like that so it's it's uh, really refreshing to see and I can't wait to see again like I keep what next can't wait to see what happens next game next game next game next month and then come playoff time like I'm really excited to see where this all kind of ends up this year because it's been such a roller coaster uh, with with uh, the way the year started and, and the changes they had to make so yeah so uh, another good win another two points banked and it's hard to believe the record is now where it is compared to where it was three weeks ago a month ago right so it's uh they've definitely stabilized and they're turning things around and uh um, things are looking up great news for 2020